Hi everyone, welcome to Study Buddy Homeschooling. In today's session, we'll be seeing CBSC Class 10 English, the story The Necklace, written by Guy Dimuk Passan. It should be pronounced as Guy Dimuk Passan. It's a French name. It should not be pronounced as Guy de Maupassant. It should be pronounced as Guy Dimuk Passan. Let's go into the story. There's a gist of the story given here. Matilda is invited to a grand party. She has a beautiful dress but no jewellery. She borrows a necklace from a friend and loses it. What happens then? So this is about a story of a lady named Matilda who borrows a necklace from her friend and loses it. So what happens after that is a story. Let's go into the story. We'll come back to the questions once we finish off the first para, first part of the story. She was one of those pretty young ladies born as if through an error of destiny into a family of clerks. So, the lady mentioned here was one of the pretty ladies. Her name is Matilda. She was born into a very ordinary family, very much middle class family, but she looked very pretty. She had no dowry to offer. No, what is meant by dowry? That gifts that you give to the your husband and their family during marriage. She had no dowry, no hopes, no means of becoming known, loved and married by a man either rich or or distinguished. She was from a very ordinary background and there was no way that she could marry somebody who was rich or famous. Distinguished means somebody who is famous. She was very much an ordinary girl from a very ordinary family and her family were clerks. Clerks refers to any lower rung jobs. Lower jobs in any organization. So they very much middle class or lower middle class family and she allowed herself to marry a petty clerk in the office of the board of education. So she married somebody who was very much like a clerk. He was a clerk which is a lower rung job in the office of board of education. So she he was like a peon uh, in the Board of Education. She was simple but she was unhappy. She was a very simple person but she was very unhappy with her present life and she married somebody who was also a clerk in the Board of Education and she was from family of clerks which means that she is very much a middle class girl, middle class woman. She suffered incessantly. Incessantly refers to being constantly. She suffered Constantly, continuously she was suffering, feeling herself born for all delicacies and luxuries. She was born in very much a middle class family in the family of clerks but she longed for luxury, she longed for comforts. She always used to dream of the niceties of the world. She dreamt of being among the richest. So that was her dream though the reality was she was born in a very much middle class family. She suffered from the poverty of her apartment, the shabby walls and the worn chairs. So she really didn't like her apartment. It looked very poor for her and it was not filled with uh, riches. Uh, the walls were very shabby. They were not neat. They were not painted neatly because her husband was a clerk and whatever he was earning was enough to run their families. They didn't have money to spend on the niceties of their life. So all worn chairs, the chairs were all uh, damaged. It was all not properly maintained. So she really didn't like the atmosphere at home because uh, her house looked very poor. Her apartment looked poor. The walls were not painted or, or decorated nicely. They were torn and worn chairs. All these things tortured and angered her. So the shabbiness of her home, she really hated. She didn't like it because she was always dreaming about the luxuries, the niceties of life. When she seated herself for dinner opposite her husband who uncovered the tureen with a delighted air. 
So whenever she sat down for dinner with her husband, who uncovered, uncovered refers to opening, opening the tureen. Tureen is a very like a long pot with a cover, generally for storing foods and served at the dining table. So when he uncovered the tureen with a delighted air, so he was always excited about his food, saying, "Oh, the good pot pie! I know nothing better than that." so this shows about her husband this shows that her husband is a very positive person very much contented with what he has in his life even in the dinner table when he is opening the tureen that is a pot which is covered with a lid and opens to see he is very excited about the good pot pie i know nothing better than that pot pie is a dish which looks very much like a pizza or a paratha but it has a filling inside either vegetable filling or meat filling it's a liquid filling on the outer it looks like paratha or a pizza so he's very much excited about that very happy i know bet i know nothing better than that so he is very much contented with what he has unlike matilda she would think of elegant dinners of shining silver she thought of the exquisite exquisite food served in marvelous dishes she had neither frocks nor jewels nothing and she loved only those things so there is a contrast here her husband is very happy to uncover the tureen it's like a porcelain uh, pot which contains the dish and he is very happy to see the good pot pie in the tureen and uh, he is so happy about it con contented but on the other hand matilda is dreaming about elegant dinners all well furnished um, crockery and in shining silver and uh, ex exquisite food excellent beautifully served food in marvelous dishes so she is all dreaming about all that variety of food uh, which is served in all um, elegant dinners and she neither had frocks nor jewels she didn't have anything that fits that um, elegant dinners and she loved only those things she didn't have any and any of those Um, exquisite dresses or jewels but still she was just dreaming for the good things always in the dreamland unlike her husband who was contented with the good pot pie she had a rich friend a schoolmate at the convent who she did not like to visit so she had a rich friend a schoolmate at the convent and she never liked to visit her she suffered so much when she returned why she didn't like to visit because she used to always compare herself with her so when she came back home who oh, that friend has so much her house is so good she has beautiful dresses beautiful ornaments so she used to compare herself with her friend and she used to be very unhappy whenever she met her friend and when she came back home she used to worry about the things she doesn't have and her friends has and the friend has so she she didn't like to visit her friend she wept for whole days from despair and disappointment so whenever she met her friend who was a rich friend a schoolmate she always suffered when she came back home because she's she used to compare herself uh, with her friend the riches she has and what she has and she used to cry in disappointment she used to be upset that she didn't have those things that she her friend has one evening her husband returned elated elated means very happy so her husband returned from office very happy bearing in his hand a large envelope so he had a very large envelope and he was very happy here he said here is something for you he is very excited he had some envelope in his hand and he was very happy and he showed to metal the you know you have here is something for you she quickly drew out a printed card which were inscribed these words on which were inscribed these words so she took out a printed card which her husband gave she the it had it read something like this the minister of public instruction and madam george rampano ask the honor of m and madam loisel's company monday evening jan january 18th at the minister's residence so this was the invite so he is invited by the minister of public instruction so since he works on the board of education so he got a invite from the minister of public instruction to come for a party on january 18th m refers to monsieur mme refers to madam so 
monsieur monsieur refers to mr and mrs madame refers to mrs in french so they got a invitation for a party by the minister of public instruction because he works in the department of board of education public instruction also is a part of education department instead of being delighted as her husband had hoped she threw the invitation spitefully upon the table murmuring what do you suppose i want with that so husband thought she'll be very happy because it's it's a very big party minister is inviting them and he thought wife will also be very happy but on the contrary she was very upset and she threw the invitation on the table saying what do i do with that the husband is saying now but my deary i thought it would make you happy now husband is saying you know i am really surprised i thought you will be happy to go for the party you never go out and this is an occasion and a fine one he is telling his wife you know you generally don't go out and now is the occasion and this is not a normal occasion it's a very great one being hosted by the minister of public instruction himself so it's a great thing it's not an ordinary party everyone wishes one and it is very select not many are given to employees you will see the whole official world there so he is telling you know it is very privilege it's a privilege that we got to go for the party we got the invitation for the party not all get the not all the employees get it so you can see a different world there you should come i thought you will be excited that's what the husband is telling his wife she looked at him with an irritated eye now the wife was really irritated matilda is really irritated her his name is lionel and she is matilda lionel and declared him patiently what do you suppose i have to wear to such a thing as that you know now she is like you know what should i wear for such a function like that he had not thought of that he stammered so husband didn't even think about it because he thought she'll be very happy but on the contrary she was very upset and she's asking what dress should i wear why the dress you wear when we go to the theater it seems very pretty to me so husband says you know we go to whenever we go to theater you wear that dress right why don't you wear that it's very nice you look pretty he was silent stupefied 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 in this me at the sight of his wife weeping as soon as he said that you know he was he was dumbstruck because um, his wife was crying she was weeping crying he stammered what is the matter what is the matter he was so worried that you know why is she crying what is the matter what is the matter by a violent effort she had controlled her vexation and responded in a very calm voice by now she was very vexed vex means really irritated upset and but still she responded in a calm voice wiping her moist cheeks she started crying so she just uh, wiped her cheeks and said nothing only i have no dress and consequently i cannot go to this affair give your card to some colleague whose wife is better fitted out than i so now she is very vexed but still she said says politely you know nothing that i don't have any dress to wear for the party and as a result it's better i don't go for the party you better give this invitation card to some friend of yours colleague or workmate of yours whose wife would have better dress than me that's what she says okay he was grieved he was very upset he was very sad husband became very sad lionel became very sad but answered let us see matilda now he says let us see how much would a suitable costume cost something that would serve for other occasions something very simple now he is he is seeing his wife crying he says you know uh, how much will a good decent dress cost that you can wear for this party also for other functions also you can wear something very simple how much would a decent dress cost now he is very concerned and he wants to get something for his wife she reflected for some seconds so she started thinking she reflected means she start thinking you know what can, what answer should she give him thinking of a sum that she 
she could ask for without bringing with it an immediate refusal and a frightened exclamation from the economical clerk now this lady is very smart she started thinking you know she should tell the amount which should not make him refuse if it's going to be huge amount he'll refuse it right away okay and um, it will leave him frightened so she should not tell an amount which will be very shocking for him and which will uh, which will make him not to refuse so she should she was very careful that she should say the right amount that you know he can buy and which will not leave him in shock she reflected for sec- seconds thinking of a sum sum refers to the money that she could ask for without bringing with it immediate without any immediate refusal and a frightened exclamation exclamation is any reaction so he should not show frightened reaction also and he should not refuse immediately also so that kind of amount she should tell from the economical clerk she knows that her husband is very much a clerk and he cannot manage much so she has to tell an amount which can be managed by him finally she said in a hesitating voice i cannot tell exactly but it seems to me that 400 francs or to cover so she says you know i cannot say but i think 400 francs like the way we have rupees it's called francs in france so this is a story based in france so she says 400 francs would cover it he turned a little pale now hearing the amount no 400 francs he became dull he turned pale refers to he became dull for he had saved just this sum to buy a gun that he might be able to join some hunting parties the next summer with some friends who went to shoot larks on sunday so what happened as soon as she said 400 francs he became dull because he had saved that money 400 francs to buy a gun so that he could go out hunting with friends to shoot larks larks refers to a bird it's a, a land bird which doesn't fly to a greater height it's a bird basically a song bird so he had saved this 400 francs to buy a gun so that he could go shooting with his friends during the next summer to shoot larks which is a bird nevertheless he answered very well i'll give you 400 francs but try to have a pretty dress even though he had a wish of buying a gun to go out with his friends hunting the next summer he still said you know well i'll give you 400 francs just go and buy a very good dress so let's move to the first part of the questions which were given in the beginning read and find out what kind of a person is madam loisel why is she always unhappy madam what kind of a person she is a very simple person but she is a very unhappy person she was born in a middle class family into the family of clerks and herself she married a clerk from board of education she was always unhappy because she didn't like her Um, apartment ambience she she found her apartment to be very shabby walls to be very shabby worn chairs but always she was dreaming herself to be among in the luxury she always dreamt of being in luxuries all the comforts so she suffered now, what kind of person is her husband her husband on the uh, it, her husband is just a contrast of miss madam loisel he was very contented what with what he had he was very happy with what he had he knew that he was a clerk in the department of board of education so he uh, knew how much he had to spend and he was always contented with what he had unlike madam loisel that is very much shown in the uh, when he sits before the dining table in the churi even in the pot pie he enjoys very much so he is very simple and a contented man let's move to the second part of the story the day of the ball approached and madam loisel seemed sad so day of the party 18 january approached and madam loisel seemed sad she still seemed sad in spite of getting a dress for 400 francs 
sad disturbed anxious she was very upset she was very anxious she was very restless nevertheless her dress was nearly ready so her dress was ready her husband said to her one evening what is the matter with you you have acted strangely for two or three days now her husband mr loisel uh, is asking you know what happened you you are very acting very differently for the past two to three days and she responded i am vexed not to have a jewel nothing to adorn myself with i shall have such a poverty stricken look i would prefer not to go to this party and she says you know i'm very vexed vexed her first to being upset so she is very upset not to have a jewel she got a dress for 400 francs but now she is uh, wanting a jewel because she doesn't have ad- anything to wear adorn refers to wear she says you know i will have a very poor look when i go to the party amongst the rich people i look very poor i better i prefer not to go to the party now after buying a dress for 400 francs she says no i would better not to go to party he replied you can wear some natural flowers in this season they look very chic uh, he says uh, you can wear some flowers you know in this season it will look very fashionable she was not convinced she is not happy with the answer no she she replied there is nothing more humiliating than to have a share shabby hair in the midst of rich women so she says you know do you think i can wear flowers i will look very shabby it gives a very insulting look humiliating refers to insulting it will be very insulting to be among amongst rich women who come with nice jewels then her husband cried out how stupid we are go and find your friend madam forester and ask her to lend her jewels now he says you know oh how stupid of us why don't you go and ask your friend madam forester and ask her to get get some jewels from her for for the party what why should we buy he says she uttered a cry of joy now she is very happy it is true she said i had not thought of that she says now she is very excited you know i didn't think about that the next day she took herself to her friend's house and related her story of distress so now she went to her friend's house who was her friend forestia and and she told her her story of sadness madam forestia went to her closet she went to her wardrobe her wardrobe place and took out a large jewel case brought it out brought it opened it and says choose my dear she gave her uh, sets she had and she asked uh, matilda to choose she saw at first some bracelets then a collar of pearls then a venetian cross of golden jewels of admirable workmanship she tried the jewels before the glass hesitated but could not could neither decide to take them nor leave them then she asked have you nothing more now her friend madam forestier she gave some jewels matilda tried them before the glass but she was not happy with them and she asked do you have anything more why yes look for yourself i do not know what will please you now even she understood that you know this lady cannot be satisfied so she gives her whole set you choose what you want suddenly she discovered in a black satin box a superb necklace of diamonds so suddenly she saw necklace of diamonds her hands trembled as she took it out she has hand started shaking tremble means shaking because uh, it was a diamond necklace she took it out and she uh, trembling she placed it about her throat against her dress and was ecstatic as soon as she uh, kept it on her body she fo- she found herself to be very happy then she asked in a hesitating voice full of anxiety could you lend this only this she says you know she took that jewel the diamond jewel out which was wrapped in a black satin box and she says can i wear this one can i take this one can you give this one to me why yes certainly she said okay then her friend says you know you can take it it's okay no problem 
she fell upon the neck of her friend embraced embraced her with passion then went away with her treasure now she is very happy that you no know, she got the jewel and she just hugged her friend and she was very happy and she thanked her and she took the necklace and went away the day of the ball arrived so the day of the function the party arrived madam loisel was a great success she was a prettiest of all she was the prettiest lady of all the people who had come in elegant gracious smiling and full of joy she was the happiest and most beautiful woman there in the party all the men noticed her asked her name and wanted to be presented so everybody including the men started noticing her asked for her name and everybody was just looking at her she danced with enthusiasm intoxicated with pleasure thinking of nothing but all this admiration this victory is so complete and sweet to her heart so she danced with all happiness and excitement intoxicated intoxicated means filled so she's all filled with pleasure thinking about the all the admiration from everybody that she's receiving everybody is looking at at her everybody is praising her beauty her dress her jewel so she's very happy this is what she's been dreaming since her childhood and that has come true so she was living that moment she felt so victorious she went home towards 4 o'clock in the morning so they had the party the whole night so they left home by 4 a.m in the morning her husband had been half asleep in one of the little saloons since midnight so in one of the small shops there he was been he's been sleeping with other three gentlemen whose wives were enjoying themselves very much so along with uh, metal that the wives of uh, the employees the other employees were uh, happily in the party but the men were sleeping he threw around her shoulders the modest wraps they had carried whose poverty clashed with the elegance of the ball costume so it was 4 in the morning so it was very cold so they had brought some wraps wraps refers to the sweaters or some covered covering something like a jacket or something either sweater or jackets and he covered uh, metalda with the um, the jacket that they had brought it looked very poor and it looked cheap and that clashed means there was a contrast she was wearing a very elegant dress and a beautiful necklace which looked very rich but the jacket which her husband gave was looking really poor so it was very contrasting she wished to hurry in order not to be noticed by the other women who were wrapping themselves which rich furs so the other women who had come to the party after the function party got over they were covering themselves with all rich furs rich jackets rich woolen jackets because it was early in the morning it was very cold they had to cover up themselves up when they are going out but this lady didn't have a proper covering it was a very um a very modest covering it was very poor looking jacket that she was wearing so she was very hesitant that nobody other women should not uh, uh, watch her wearing such a cheap jacket so she started running loisel detained her wait said he i'm going to call a cab he said no wait wait i'll call a cab but she could not listen and descended the steps rapidly but she did not listen and her husband said wait i'll call a cab it's so cold it's early in the morning it's very not safe and uh, but she didn't listen she started coming the steps very quickly when they were in the street they found no carriage and they began to seek for one hailing the coachman whom they saw at a distance so they they could not find any carriage or any any vehicle but they were calling for men who were who, whom they could see at a distance it was very early in the morning 4 4 o'clock so they could not find any cabs or any carriage they walked along toward the river hopeless and shivering they were all shivering because it's 4 am in the morning finally they found one of those old carriages that one sees in paris after nightfall so he had finally they found one carriage it took them as far as their door and they went wearily up to their apartment so it took them till their door and they went up wearily wearily means tired so the whole night they've been partying it's almost early in the morning up to their apartment it was all over for her and on his part he remembered that he would have to be at the office 
by 10 o'clock so it's almost 4 4 30 5 o'clock in the morning but whatever he remembered was he has to go back to office again by 10 o'clock he can't take leave she removed the wraps from her shoulders before the glass so she removed the jackets wraps refers to the jackets or sweater or whatever she was wearing to prevent herself from cold from her shoulders before the glass for a final view of herself in her glory so that was the final time she's going to see herself in the mirror with nicely decked up because after that she'll remove it so she saw it before the mirror suddenly she uttered a cry she started suddenly she started a crying her necklace was not around the neck. So it was a big shock for her because her necklace was not around the neck. It was a big shock for her. She was about to remove her dress. She, was, she thought, you know, I'll just let me have a look of myself before the mirror, before I remove the dress. And she found that her necklace is not there. So let's move to the questions which is given below the param. Read and find out what fresh problem now disturbs Madame Loisel. Fresh problem is that she doesn't have a proper jewel to wear for the party. How is the problem solved? The problem is solved by taking, lending a jewel from her friend Forestier. So she thought her husband suggested, why, why don't you lend it or get it from your friend Madame Forestier? For, for that particular day instead of buying. So this way the problem of jewel is solved. She could lend it from her friend. Let's move to the next part of the story. Loisel already half undressed asked what is the matter? Now this lady Matilda she stood before the mirror and found that her necklace is missing so she started crying. Now her husband Loisel he was trying to undress himself and he was about to sleep. When she asked, when he asked, what's the matter? Why are you crying? She turned towards him excitedly. I have, I have, I no longer have Madame Forestier's necklace. So she says, no, I don't have the Forestier's, Miss For Madame Forestier necklace anymore. He rose in dismay. He was so upset. He just couldn't believe it. What? How is that? Is that not, is, it is not possible. He could not believe that she lost it. And they looked in the folds of the dress. They, they started looking for the necklace in the dress, in the folds of the cloak. Cloak is like an outer covering, which is like a sleeveless outer covering, like a sweater. In the pockets, everywhere. They could not find it. So they just started searching in the dresses, wherever pockets and everywhere. But they could not find it. He asked, are you sure you still had it when we left the minister's house? Now he's asking, you know, are you sure when we left the minister's house, was it on your, with you? Was the jewel with you? Yes, I felt it as we came out. She says, you know, I felt it as we came out. As we came from the minister's office, I could feel the necklace. But if you had lost it in the street, we should have heard it fall. It must be in the cap. Now he says, you know, but if you lost, had lost it in the street, we could have, it, it's a very heavy diamond necklace, right? If it had fallen, we could have heard the sound. So it would have fallen on the cab only. Yes, it is possible. Did you take the number? Now she's saying, now she's saying, did you take the number? No. And you, did you notice what it was? No. Now they are thinking probably the necklace is in the cab. It would have fallen in the cab because had it fallen on the street, they would have heard the sound. They looked at each other, utterly cast down. Finally, they were really upset. They were really down, demotivated, really upset. They were already tired after a whole night's party. And on the top of it, they lost the necklace. So they were really upset. Finally, Loisel dressed himself again. So he was undressing himself. Now again, he had to dress up. I am going, he said, over the track where we went on foot to see if I can find it. So he said, I'll just go and find it on the track. It would have fallen on the track that we walked in. So let's go and find. I'll go and find, he says. And he went. She remained in her evening gown, not having the force to go to bed. So she didn't have the, she didn't have the mind or the mood to sleep. So she was just staying there in her place with that gown. She didn't even remove that gown. And she didn't even go to bed also. Towards 7 o'clock, her husband returned. He had found nothing. So he left early in the morning, probably around 5, 5.30, searching for the path, for the necklace on the path that they walked. But they could not find anything. So he returned back, uh, nothing. Empty-handed, he returned back. 
he went to the police and to the cab officers and put an advertisement in the paper newspapers offering a reward so he went to police he went to cab cab officers where he took the cab so even he put an ad advertisement in the paper saying that if somebody finds a necklace they'll be rewarded they'll be given some gift she waited all day in state of bewilderment before this frightful disaster loisel returned in the evening his face pale he had discovered nothing so the whole day this lady has been waiting in confusion expectation anxiety all that was happening she was very restless and uh, she was very scared also because it's a very expensive diamond necklace but her husband returned that evening and he could not find the necklace he said write to your friend that you have broken the clasp of the necklace and you will have it repaired that will give us time so he says you know now tell your friend that the end of the chain you know when you tie up the necklace that is called the clasp where you pin it that's called the clasp so you tell your friend that write to your friend that the clasp of the necklace is broken and it'll take time for you to fix it up you have to repair it and you will give it after the repair so this will give us time to search for it he says so she wrote as he dictated so she wrote a letter as her husband said at the end of a week they had lost all hope and loisel older by 5 years declared we must replace this jewel so they they were wait, they waited for one week's time they even wrote a letter to her friend saying that the clasp of the necklace is broken and give us some time to get it repaired so they were, they kept searching for one week but they could not so loisel who was elder to metalda by 5 years he said you know we have to replace we have to do something that we can replace the jewel that's how we can give it to her, your friend so they uh, loisel is older than metalda by 5 years in a shop of palais royal they found a chaplet of diamonds which seemed to them exactly like the one they had lost so they went to a very expensive diamond shop and they found diamonds which were exactly like what she had lost it was valued at 40000 francs they could get it for 36000 so it was 40000 francs but they could get it for 36000 after bargain so even 4 400 francs dress was such a costly affair but now they had to buy something for 36000 loisel possessed 18000 francs he already had 18000 had as savings which his father had left him so father his father had given him 18000 francs and he has to manage another 18000 to make it to 36 he borrowed the rest so he borrowed another 18000 francs he made ruinous promises took money from usurers and the whole race of lenders so he took money from all the money lenders he had to get 18000 francs then he went to the new necklace depositing on he then he went to get the new necklace depositing on the merchant's counter 36000 francs so somehow he managed 36000 18000 francs which his father had given him the other 18000 he had borrowed from money lenders which he has to repay for which he has to repay when madam loisel took back the jewels to madam forester the latter said to her in a frigid tone so now she she got the jewelry she bought it for 36000 and when she took to her friend forester she was very upset she told in a very uh, rough tone uh, frigid refers to very cold and uh, uh, not a pleasant tone you should have written them to me sooner for i might have needed it now her friend said no you should have written it sooner you know uh, i might have needed it she was not very happy that matilda returned it late madam forester did not open the jewel box as madam loisel feared she would what would she think if she should perceive the substitution what would what should she say would she take her for a robber now as soon as she gave the second thing is you know she was uh, matilda was worried you know this uh, madam forester should not open the box what if she finds out that it's a it's a replaced one it's not her one it's not her original jewel but it's substituted by a new one 
So, would she think me as a robber? That's what Matilda was thinking. Madame Loisel now knew the horrible life of necessity. Now she knew what it was important in her life. She did her part. However, completely heroically, it was necessary to pay this frightful debt. She would pay it. So, they know they had borrowed 18,000 francs, which is not a small money. And he is a small clerk in Department of Education, Board of Education. So, he wouldn't get much salary. So, they had to pay this huge loan. It was a huge loan for them at a very high interest. So, what they did, they had to make lots of adjustments. And they did it very bravely. They sent away the maid. They could not afford the maid. They changed their lodgings. They completely changed their home. They rented some rooms in an attic. They even shifted their home and rented a small attic. Attic means which is like a, a home below a roof. It's a very small attic. Even it's very difficult when a person stands in the attic. It's sometimes, you know, it can touch the roof. It is a very small place. Generally used as a storeroom. But now these people are living in an attic. Because they had to repay the loans. She learned the odious work of a kitchen she had never done her kitchen work always she had uh, had maids to do it but now she had to do the very unpleasant work of the kitchen odious refers to very unpleasant and not very uh, happy thing to do she washed the dishes she washed the so soiled linen their clothes and dish clothes which she hung on the line to dry she took down the refuse to the street each morning and brought up the water, stopping at each landing to catch her breath. And clothed like a woman of the people, she went to the grocers, butchers and fruiterers with her basket on her arm, shopping, haggling to the last sow of her miserable money. So now she knew the reality of her life. She had to do all the kitchen work herself. She had to do all the washing of her clothes herself. She had to do all the housework herself, bringing her water. And she dressed very much like a normal person. And she used to go and get things from her the shop by herself. She never be, behaved like an elite. Now, previously, she used to believe that she was a very from a rich family she was always dreaming like that but now she knew the reality and she behaved like a very much middle class girl she wore dresses very much like a normal woman she went to do everything haggling to the last saw so refers to the french money which is of a very low value something like a paisa so she she was very careful not to even lose one saw she was bargaining till the last saw so that's how she had become. The husband worked evenings putting the books of some merchants in order and nights he often did copying at five saws a page. So husband apart from the usual board of education club job he was do arranging books for some merchants and keeping them in an order and he used to copy. Copy means refer writing. Copyright, writing at five saws a page. So, if he writes five pages, I mean, um, uh, for one page, he will get five saws. So, that's how he used to earn more money to repay the loans that they had got to buy the necklace. All this life lasted for 10 years. So, they had to do this routine for 10 years. Apart from his usual job, he had to do help. A merchant order keep books in order you have to do copying uh, uh, pages and for five pages and for a page you got five sauce and this life it went on for 10 years at the end of 10 years they had restored all so it took them 10 years to repay the loan of 18,000 francs that they had taken meanwhile Loisel was also working hard at home she did everything by herself Madame Loisel seemed old now. 10 years is a very long time. She was very much stressed and she became very old very quickly. She had become a strong, hard woman, a crude woman of the poor household. Her hair badly dressed, her skirts awry, her hands red. She spoke in a loud tone and washed the floors with large pails of water. So, Madame Loisel 
was um, a very dreamy girl dreamy woman in the initial stage but after the necklace after the loan she had become very rough and tough because she knew the reality of her life so she had become a very strong hard woman her um, she had become old she was badly dressed because she didn't have time or money to do that because she was always into work 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 so she didn't have time to take care of herself her skirts or her hands had become red and rough she spoke in a loud tone and she is she has become very strong by the end of 10 years because she had to do everything by herself but sometimes when her husband was at office she would seat herself before the window and think of that evening party of former times of that ball where she was so beautiful and so flattered so whenever she had time and whenever her husband was in office she used to stand herself before the mirror and she used to think of the good times when um, she was at the party when she was admired by everybody how beautiful she was looking so she used to think about that but whenever her time permitted her how would it have been if she had not the necklace she used to think you know what if i had not lost the necklace who knows how singular is life how life is full of changes how small a thing will ruin or save one so even a small incident of her losing the necklace that changed her whole life her husband's whole life so she used to think about that one sunday ash as she was walk taking a walk in shah elise to rid herself of the cares of the week she suddenly perceived a woman walking with a child so on a sunday because monday to uh, saturday she used to busy with her household chores so on sunday she was walking in a shaw elise it's a very famous uh, place in france very famous uh, street in france and she was just roaming around there to be free she suddenly perceived a woman walking with a child she saw a woman walking with a child it was madam forestier still young still pretty still attractive madam forestier was looking the same madam loisel was affected she was upset you know she is looking so young hap very uh, young pretty attractive she looks the same which she looked 10 years back should she speak to her she was thinking should i speak to her yes certainly and uh, now that she has paid she would tell her all why not now she is you know why should i not speak to her i have given her i have paid my loans also why should i not tell she approached her good morning jean her friend did not recognize her so madam forestier did not recognize her at all and was astonished to be so familiarly addressed by this common personage you know she she was surprised you know who is this person her, the way she addresses me looks very familiar but uh, she was still not getting who the person was she stammered but madam i do not know you must be mistaken she says no i don't know you you must have mistaken me no i am matilda loisel she, she said i am matilda loisel her friend uttered a cry of astonishment she was surprised oh my poor matilda how you have changed she said no, you have changed so much you look so different now yes i have had some hard days since i saw you and some miserable ones and all because of you now she says openly matilda i know from the time i last time i saw you and from the time uh, i took the necklace from you my life has become miserable because of me how is that forestier is surprised you know because of me how is that you recall the diamond necklace that you loaned me to wear to the minister's ball she says you know do you remember i took the diamond necklace from you for the minister's function yes very well well i lost it how is that since you returned it to me she says you know how is that you returned to me right i returned another to you exactly like that and it has taken us 10 years to pay for it you can understand that it was not easy for us who have nothing but it is finished i am decently content she says you know whatever i returned to you is not yours but we got it new for you and it took 10 years for us to repay the loans for after, now we have paid the loans now i am really happy i am at least uh, happy decently she says madam forestier stopped short she said you say that you bought a diamond necklace to replace mine she says you know she was surprised did you buy a 
Diamond necklace to replace mine? Yes, you did not perceive it then. They were just a lie. She says, no, you did not get it that time. They were just same. And she smiled with proud and simple joy. Madame Forestier was touched and took her friends, her hands as she replied, Oh, my poor Matilda, mine were false. They were not even worth 500 francs. She says, you know, as soon as Matilda says, you know, you could not get it that time. But I had bought a new one. She says, you know, she just took Matilda's hands. You know, oh, my poor Matilda, you know what? They were fake ones. They were not real ones. They were not even worth 500 francs. So imagine the reaction of Matilda. So this is a story which says about a woman who was always in a dreamland. This shows that reality is different. For that particular one incident, she had to pay 10 years of her life, her husband's life, sacrificing many things in her life. So it's better to be contented with what we have and not to go into the dreamland. Work hard and be realistic. Okay. Thanks for watching and please do subscribe to our channel. Question and answers I'll post in another video. Thank you very much.